This was a request sent to me by one of my subscribers. With Netflix releasing their Woodstock 99 documentary this week, I had already released a video about the festival yesterday, but today I wanted to talk about Woodstock 94 and the band Jackal's infamous appearance. Hailing from Georgia, Jackal seemed to be the antithesis of what was happening in rock music when they became popular in the early 90s. The bands who dominated the rock charts at that time heavily consisted of alternative rock acts singing about social causes or the harsh realities of life. Jackal didn't take themselves so seriously as they're a southern metal band who sang about the pleasures of life, including sex, partying, and just having a good time. Their musical themes seem to be more in line with the glam metal bands of the Sunset Strip than the Pacific Northwest. I mean, these guys were so bold they had a song called She Loves My Expletive. Jackal hailed from Kennesaw, Georgia, a suburb of Atlanta. The group's music was heavily influenced by the likes of Leonard Skinner and ACDC, and they soon developed a reputation for being hard partying animals, and it sometimes landed the band in trouble. Frontman Jesse James Dupree was arrested in 1993 for dropping his pants on stage and fined $1,500. The same year Dupree posed for Playgirl in the Sexiest Rockers issue, and while the photos probably earned the band some more female fans, it also cost the group an important business deal. Director Penelope Spheris, who directed Beverly Hillbillies, was in negotiations with Jackal to write and perform the film's title track. After the magazine photos got published, Spheris pulled the plug on the deal. It was hypocritical given that actress Erica Elniak, the actress playing Ellie Mae, was the Playboy Playmate for the month of July 1989. Dupree would tell the Morning Call newspaper, I don't understand why it is worse for a man to pose naked in a magazine than a woman. I was told I wasn't the right image. That would be okay, except Penelope didn't hold it against her, referring to Elniak, for getting naked in a men's magazine. In addition to that, Bon Jovi refused to have the band as an opening act, and their ruckus behavior also cost them a touring spot with Leonard Skinner. Jackal would sign with Geffen Records in the early 90s, and the label would put out their self-titled debut record in 1992. The record would go platinum thanks in large part to five singles, all of which charted in the top 40 on the mainstream rock charts. In 1994, the band released their follow-up, Push Comes to Shove, which sold fewer copies than its predecessor, but it still won gold. The same year was the 25th anniversary of Woodstock, and a festival would be held to honor its anniversary. By Dupree's own admission, the band had to beg to get on the bill, and they were one of the show stealers that weekend. They would be the first metal band to play the festival on a Friday, and the newspaper The Hartford Current would cite the Woodstock program manual, which referred to Jackal as, and I quote, a cross between Beavis and Budette and Charles Manson, not necessarily in that order. The band would play a nine-song set with Dupree taking to the stage wearing an Uncle Sam hat and a mirror shard jacket that weighed upwards of 40 pounds. Entertainment Weekly would publish an article that would state what the band did on stage, and it was as follows, saying, and I quote, In less than one hour, Dupree, number one, grabbed his crotch and urged the crowd to do the same. Number two, cut his hand and smeared his body with blood, saying, I was bleeding because I love the people. Number three, poured a bottle of cognac on the mosh pit. Number four, lit a stool on fire and sliced it in half with a chainsaw. Number five, fired a 12-gauge goose gun as a salute to the fallen Woodstockers Keith Moon, Janis Joplin, and Jimi Hendrix being quoted as saying, I didn't kill nobody. And number six, and to accompany the anthem She Loves My Expletive, dropped his trousers and shoved his raw rump into the video camera. One thing the article forgot to mention is that during Jackal's set, Dupree took a joint that someone threw on stage and smoked it in front of the crowd, despite New York State's strict drug laws at the time. He would tell Louder Sound looking back, they were being a little heavy handed about drugs and alcohol, but how can you have a Woodstock without people smoking a little bit of dope, he would ask. Following Jackal's performance, Dupree would tell Entertainment Weekly, We are the kings of politically incorrect. We felt it our civic responsibility that these people got double their money's worth, otherwise they would have been ripped off. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll Stories, take care.